All right, welcome to the Tuesday <laughs> show. My name is Ultra David. I'm James Chen. How's everybody going? Okay, I was waiting for it. All right. <laughs> Thanks for not disappointing me. Sorry, Let me just first make that. sure that the sound is going okay. Well, they heard the music, so... Uh, but in the past, when we've actually started talking, that's been Yeah, issue. it's weird, so... Or they said it was a fuzz, the, the buzz. Yeah. The music drowns out the buzz, but yeah, okay. Okay, great. Uh, Sounds good. Thanks. Um, so this week, we want to talk about a few things, including, including Yumacon, mm -hmm. which we went to this past weekend, including also the Topanga League going on in Japan, which in part happened this past weekend, and a few other things, Marvel 3 voting, uh, KI characters, um, most importantly, old games. <laughs> yeah. Old games, baby. Old games, old games. Let's start off with Yumacon, though, because that was what we went to. We got back yesterday from it. Yep. And uh, Yumacon is a, a primarily an anime convention that happens in Detroit, Michigan. Yeah. How, how was your flight, by the way? Because you, you, he, you know how they always offer, like, we've overbooked this flight. Anyone yeah. willing to take the next flight? Well, David obviously wanted to avoid me for about five hours, so he chose a later flight. Yeah, know? man, they're offering four hundred dollars uh, in a in a like certificate for another flight that you can use on any other flight. So, it doesn't matter where I work. I was just gonna go to work afterward mm -hmm. to the office, but I had my laptop with me and I can work from anywhere. So oh, I just worked while I was at the airport. He wanted to avoid me. Few a few, few hours later, <laughs> got a free four hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. So. so. No, that's cool though. But yeah, I mean. Yumacon is definitely an anime convention primarily. The only thing that we knew about the anime convention was there was a lot of people in cosplay. But outside yeah. of that, we were in that game room the entire time. Yeah, so the, the cosplay part of it is a huge thing, of course. In fact, so many people were dressed up that we were the weirdos walking around in our, in Shirt our shirts and, and ties. Yeah. That was, I think we were the only people I saw like that. With the exception <laughs> of like some people who were dressed up as a character, right? Like whatever, oh, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah, suit and tie yeah, yeah. plus like a mask uh -huh. yeah, or something yeah, yeah. like I saw that in a few cases I think but... the only other person who dressed up nicely was Jason from Event Hubs right so Jason, yeah that's right yeah he yeah. actually dressed up so yeah, yeah yeah but but so yeah James is right we we pretty much hung out in the games room so the games room was just it was so, so awesome man. It was so <laughs> awesome it's this gigantic room it is literally a hundred feet by fifty feet. They said it was a, a dining hall. It's a big dining hall. It's a big dining hall for a gigantic hotel. So think right. about that for a second. So. Right. This big old ballroom. It's size kind of. It's not a ballroom, but ballroom size. That was entirely full of arcade machines and consoles playing like every game from mm -hmm. from competitive ones like fighters and shooters and Dota and SC two and whatever to uh, non-competitive ones like Minecraft was there and mm -hmm. Bomberman was there. That's and, a competitive game. I mean, oh yeah, no, no. I mean, but I'm just I'm trying to get an idea of like how, how many games were there. All the all sorts of rhythm games were there. Dude, there was racing games Racing there. games yeah, were there. Yeah, they had the ones where you lean on the motorcycle. Like actual arcade racing yeah, games. Yeah, they had virtual on, you know, the virtual actual cabinets. They had pinball machines. Pinball. Which I actually got to play some of, although unfortunately the first one I had to play was the one based on the Transformers movies mm. which i made me want to smash the glass but oh so it's I, a new one though yeah it's a new one uh, but then i played uh some an x-men pinball so okay I was happy about okay that. Yeah. okay so but yeah so this room once you got into it once you paid the entrance fee to get into it was free to play everything for mm -hmm, 24 mm -hmm. hours a day it was yeah crazy awesome basically me and david didn't get any sleep because we went to sleep at three or four a.m both of the nights two nights yeah because we were up playing ST and Third Strike and CBS yeah. 2 and... It was like, we, oh my God. we were done commentating. It was the typical thing where after commentating, we're just like, oh, let's finally go grab some dinner. We'd go and grab some super late-ass dinner. Yeah. And that's when you usually go back to the room and be like, all right, let's just crash and get ready. No. This time we went back to the room and we played, uh, like like you said, Super Turbo. I, I didn't actually play any CBS 2. Well, but okay. we played Super Turbo and uh, Third Strike for a long time. Like, a pretty long time. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was pretty yeah. fun. So. And, it, and it was all on, on arcade machine. There was a there was a head-to-head -head, uh, sit-down Japanese-style cab for mm -hmm. Third Strike. There was a stand-up side-by-side Super Turbo. Semi-US-style mm -hmm. sticks for, for Super Turbo that had um, j Japanese sticks, but American layout right, and buttons. A, they had a sit-down side-by-side Alpha 3, which I did not get to play, because most of the time I walked over to the Alpha 3 machine 
most of the people playing it did not look like they knew what they were doing, so I didn't want to mess with them. Yeah. <laughs> but um, NBC2, they had a side-by-side. -side. They even had a Mark of the Wolves in the Mark middle of the there. Dude, yeah. it was so good. So, uh, so that that made it for me, man. That Even even Tournament of the Tournament was good, but Tournament Aside... Dude, the tournament oh, actually man. was really well done, though. Yeah, okay, I mean, so let's let's quit talking about the game room, which was awesome. We'll get back to the game room. We gotta get back we'll to the game it. room. <laughs> um, the tournament itself was cool. You know, I mean, calling it a major is a stretch, because mm -hmm. some of the tournaments, uh, some of the games had 30 people, mm -hmm. you know, 60 people. I think Street Fighter Four had, like, 72 people. Well, they were so. actually supposed to cap to si at 64 right. every tournament, and someone forgot to cap Street Fighter, right. so they just had to give a bunch of people buys first exactly. round and stuff like that. So. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, but, nevertheless, the action was actually really good. Um, the top eights, hopefully pe people mm -hmm. got to watch on Sunday were all, I thought, really nice. It was for Persona, for Injustice, Marvel 3, and Street Fighter 4 were the four games that were being played. Yeah, and um, not only that, too, but I had heard, you were there last year, but I heard that the tournament ran a little late and all sorts of stuff yeah. like that. This year, everything ran super on time. In fact, we got out, we were done pretty early in the day for most of the days, and um, you know, even while we were watching the stream, it felt like, like, oh, wow, we're going to be here for a while. But they went through the loser's bracket really yeah. fast. They did also. I, I just thought the tournament overall was super well run. So I was really It was happy. awesomely yeah. run. I totally agree. Yeah, Rick, Rick from Focus Fire. Focus Fire was doing a lot of stuff uh, there. Rick, Rick ran it. Uh, Focus yes. Firefighters, Lucas was, was streaming it. Absolutely true, Agent Yipes bodied my hot dog. But mm, he, David got revenge, and you bodied his hamburger. So. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> Not intentionally, exactly, but that's what happened. You bodied his hamburger the same way he bodied my hot dog. There was food on the table. No one was claiming it for an hour. Yeah. And then so it was like, well, if no one's claiming it, it's mine now. It. So that's yeah, right. exactly. It was after so, the food court had closed, so that was pretty much my yeah, only option. Exactly. So David, thank you for getting yeah, revenge on you. Thank you. Thank you. That was yeah. good. That was well, good. let's talk about the games. Let's talk about the, <laughs> the tournaments. That is. So this is this is in Detroit. Talk about Street Fighter first. This is in mm -hmm. Detroit. Uh, the biggest name Detroit player is Wolf Crone. Yes. Now, interestingly enough, I guess Wolf Crone isn't necessarily the most loved player in Detroit. Right. Like, so Detroit's not like, yo, go Wolf Crone, right? But the interesting that thing that happened this tournament, he was the only player left out in the top six, right, from Detroit? Yeah, that's right. And um, Well, from, from the Michigan area, not, from just, Michigan. not just from Detroit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so once, uh, I guess, uh, tied for seventh, Octopus on Fire and Playing yeah. to Win both got eliminated, um, he was really the only one left. Mm -hmm. And um, the Detroit area really got behind him. They did, they did. Mm -hmm. he, he, was, he was worried, in fact, about even coming to the tournament the Friday. We weren't sure that he was going to show up on Saturday. And, and uh, he ended up deciding to do it. In part, he didn't want to come because... He was just kind of worried that he would get heckled and that. Yeah, people... because that he's never had that great. Yeah, exactly. It you know. doesn't have a great relationship with some of the people. So, but it ended up being, as you said, that he that he got a ton of crowd support in the top eight. So top eight was Wolf Chrome with Viper, Knuckle Dew with Guile, a little bit of Akuma, Mean Saltine with Geef, Chris G with Ultra with Sakura. Ultra TV Mean Saltine. Ultra Gen TV Mean Saltine. <laughs> Happy Medicine with Bison, Mike Ross with Honda, Octopus on Fire with Blanca. And playing to win corn, playing to win. I didn't know he was corn. I didn't That's know he was bizarre. corn either. Yeah, um, exactly. Uh, with Dawson. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, a lot of that. A lot of that was good. Some of the. Some of it didn't go how I thought it would. Playing to win, is a really good sim player who just kind of let Honda walk in on him. That, I yeah. didn't get a chance to talk with him about it afterward, but he... I mean, it was interesting because right before it happened, I said that Mike Ross got a lot of playing time with Filipino champ. Yeah. So I felt like. He was going to do really well, but you've act I, I hadn't actually seen a lot of playing to win Dalsum, so I didn't know where he stood with right. Filipino champ. So I guess maybe he should have done a little bit stronger. I, but... I thought he would. I really thought mm -hmm. he would. He did great in Injustice, but in, in this game, he got top eight and pretty much got asked out there. Yeah. Uh, Octopus on Fire was a was a pretty good Blanca, actually. He was... He... I mean, that character's not very good, but he he was not the stupid shenanigans Blancas that mm -hmm. you see, like pestering people but that don't get past top 12 you know what i mean <laughs> yeah it's funny because every time i commentate blanca matches i always say he's a shenanigansy character but octopus on fire played him really grounded you yeah know, really I, solid i style. think i think that's the better 
style for him. Mm-hmm. It's just mm-hmm. that I don't think he's that great. I thought he was okay at the start of this game, at the start of 80-2012. Really don't think so anymore. But, you know, he had some cool setups. He knew unblockables and whatnot, so that was that was cool. But he did not get too far um, in top eight. He lost in the first round to Happy Medicine with Bison. Mm, yeah, yeah. So Mike Ross gets fifth. Happy Medicine, Bison, fifth uh, as well. Um, Chris G loses to Wolf Crone. Yeah. Chris G lost to Wolf Crone. Yeah, yeah. Chris, I don't know what the deal was, but his execution was not 100%. And, on every game. Yeah, it just consistently that game. day. I don't know what was up, but... I mean, he was he was thinking fine. It just right. seemed like his hands weren't quite there for whatever reason. Um, they're big. <laughs> and ironically... It's more important for him in Street Fighter than it is in Marvel. Isn't that isn't it weird that he can play Morgan and do this constantly? Yeah, I know. But like, I don't know in Street Fighter. Who knows? Because like honestly, the way he plays Marvel, it's less important for him to have his execution on point than it is on Street Fighter because Sakura's the kind of character yeah, that has to capitalize on everything. So it's kind of weird. Thought it was really cool that Mean Saltine got third place with Geef. Obviously, I'm a big Geef fan. On top of that. Um, uh, Mean Saltine is you know a player I've seen whenever I've gone to the Midwest, mm-hmm. and he's always kind of threatened to get to get high in in tournaments. <laughs> Just gonna, not 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 going to alter that statement. Um, That's why we sponsor. Him. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but but hasn't in in bigger tournaments. So yeah, it was no, awesome to see that he got third. I was glad to see it because I mean Zangief. I mean, it's just a terribly underrated character. I think he's really strong. I mean, Ooh. No, I, well, I don't know. You still think he's bad. I don't but think he's bad a, either. I think he's in the middle. There's a lot of Zangus that are doing well. I mean, I guess the way my reasoning just comes from watching too much Snake Eyes. Because mm. you watch Snake Eyes at Wednesday Night Fights, and the guy just seems so damn near unbeatable. Oh, man. If that, if that dude played Faye or something, he'd be winning Evo. He's ridiculous. I don't know. I, see, ridiculous. that's the thing. I don't know. I think Zangief suits his style a little it, bit better. It suits his style, but it's just... Yeah, I don't know. You're not, winning, <laughs> you're not winning Evo with that character. Um... But anyway, it was great to see that that Geef got third place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Knuckle Dew, young guy, still only seventeen years old, uh, already qualified for Capcom Cup and Cross Tekken, and he's won tournaments before. But this time he gets second to to Viper. In fact, um, he he lost pretty badly in Grand Finals. Wolf Chrome was coming three, from zero. losers. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, three, three, zero, three, uh, three, one, three, zero. I don't know. I think my favorite thing about that tournament seriously was halfway through the top eight when Wolf Chrome started noticing that the audience was cheering for him. Yeah, you saw this smile break out on yeah. his face. He looked really happy about that. Like yeah. he looked, yeah, he looked genuinely touched by the whole thing. You he, know? he was so, actually smiling. I mean, it yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and he was, was just cool. like after he won one game, you could tell he was trying really hard not to laugh, and then all of a sudden he just like. <laughs> burst out smiling because everyone's cheering for him yeah. so I felt really good for Wolf Crow yeah. I was super happy for him and when I interviewed him afterwards he says he hasn't won a tournament since NEC the previous year which uh, is like almost a year ago so wow. really good to see him back in the mix here I mean I'm not gonna name any names but there were definitely a lot of salty people oh everybody in that top eight was mad mad about Viper again I mean it was like as soon as Wolf Crone won, that whole Viper is too good conversation came right. back, which had disappeared for a whole year. I know, right? She doesn't win a tournament <laughs> for most of a year, and uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't know, and and I don't get it because the way that he wins is not just with crazy go nuts. Mm-hmm. He has footsies, man. He was playing with sweeps with that character. That character, I looked this up. Her sweep is a twelve frame startup move <laughs> that has eighteen frames of recovery. So it's it's like this slow sweep, you know. It's not like some Goken stuff. It's mm-hmm. like you gotta you gotta place it and time it. And he was doing that. Dude, we're always amazed when Justin and Ricky can use Rufus's sweep. And right. Rufus's sweep is better than Viper's sweep. Yeah, yeah, so, it is. <laughs> yeah, but um, I don't know. I, I was super happy for Wolf Clone. I was glad to see him uh, back in the back in the thick of things. You know what I mean? And it was just really cool because he defended home turf like that. You know, so that's that's gotta mean a lot to him. Yeah. Especially, like I said, with getting the crowd behind him. I yeah, thought yeah. that was really cool. So It, it was. It was. I, th- I, I agree that that was one of the highlights mm-hmm. of the event for me. Let's talk about Marvel. Yeah, I mean, gee, what can you say? I mean, seriously, Chris G bodied everybody. <laughs> Chris, Chris G pretty much bodied everybody. So he... He got first place. He came. He never was defeated. He was mm-hmm. from winners and everything. So he got first place. 
He mostly, of course, played Morgan, Doom, Virgil. He did play at Wesker Ryu Hawkeye a couple of times, including against Yipes. That was really surprising. So they met in winner's finals. And um, Yipes, even beforehand, to play Chris G, he's like, I can't wait to play Chris G. I want to get in on that Morgan. It's fun trying to get in on him. Yeah. And then Chris just played his second team. And I don't know if that just threw Yipes off completely, but he got beat up pretty badly. By it was three one. Yeah, he. I think Yipes won like the first game, and then Chris just won like three in a row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm. Oh yeah, I was commentating with Mike, and after Chris lost the first one, Mike's like, "I'm gonna bet you a thousand dollars that Chris is not gonna switch teams." Oh really? And I was like, "Yipes might be dangerous enough. I'll, I'll take that bet, right?" And he went straight back to the same team, and Mike was like, "Too much pride." Too much pride. Well, it worked out and for him. he was right, so... It worked. He he won. He won. He beat Yipes there, and he won the whole thing. So, second place was Korn's JDM, local player. Really strong zero. Uh, I liked watching his zero a lot. Yipes got third. Uh, Korn's the almighty LPZ. Has a cool team, I thought, with, with Joe Morgan Doom. He got fourth place. Yeah, it's, it's the team that apparently Yipes says that he wants Dominion to play. Like, hmm. drop Strange and play Doom. Right. But, um, I mean, it's very similar style, right? Sure. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I really like that team. Uh, Dark Shotgun got fifth with Deadpool, Doom, Virgil, and and uh, fifth place, the other fifth place was UVG's Noel Brown, mm -hmm. mostly Wolvie, Doom, Phoenix. He did play Dormammu, Doom, Phoenix, which I had never seen him play before. Yeah, yeah, But he yeah. did play that against Zeros. He played that against uh, JDM and, like, the team tournament and stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, that was really cool to see that he has you know, a secondary team. Um, he was pretty confident like he was going to win that tournament, too. Um, he got he got defeated by Korn JDM. Because mm -hmm. uh, JDM, I mean, his zero was really strong. Yeah. He had a really good zero team. And, I mean, Yipes sent him to losers in a really close one, three to two. Mm -hmm. But after Yipes lost to Chris G, you could kind of tell he was shaken a little bit because when he played JDM, JDM pretty much bodied him in losers' finals. So. I think I think that's accurate to say that he was a little shaken. You could see it kind of on his face. He was mm -hmm. like, like he was mad. Yeah, okay. he was like, I wanted to fight more. I could tell he wanted to fight the Morgan team. Yeah. If he had lost to the Morgan team, I don't think he would have been as mad. I think you're probably right. Yeah. 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 So. So the uh, seventh place, Zeus with Dante, Virgil, Strider. Uh, and then K-Brad with Dante, Frank West, and Virgil. So, actually, the Michigan area area did a little bit better in Marvel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is really more like the specialty of most players there. Wolf Crone aside, uh, I, I would say that they're better known for for Marvel. Um, one of the guys who I would have thought might get top eight footwork didn't. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, He was you know, definitely one of the major threats to do mm -hmm. that. But I really liked watching LPZ, Dark Shotgun, JDM all play. Uh, I thought they were all really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they all did really well. But, I mean, it's just, again, no one can beat Chris G. Chris G uh, is just Chris, like... Chris, Chris. I talked with a couple people about him, mm -hmm. actually, about about how he's getting better. And yeah! You, right? you can see it. I mean, you can uh -huh. see it in his in his Morgan patterns, in his fireball patterns. He is now using different patterns for lots of different characters. Um Different patterns for tall characters, different patterns mm -hmm. for short characters, different patterns for offense, for defense, for when the opponent goes up into the sky. I mean, oftentimes when you see a Morgan and the opponent goes up into the sky and is like doing, you know, Hagar, Whiff, Command Grab, mm -hmm. whatever in the air, they'll just keep doing whatever they're doing. Horizontals, horizontals, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But when Chris sees you do that, when he expects that you're going to fall down, he will set up a certain thing so you go boop, 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 mm -hmm. all the way down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I don't know why people don't out. do that, but... But he, he's doing that kind of stuff now, and his offense is awesome, and his Virgil's getting better, and it's yeah. like... Yeah, I mean, I talk, when me and yeah. Yipes were doing commentary for a Chris G match, he was just like, nobody throws fireballs like Chris G. Like, yeah. he plans it, and he watches it. And the other thing, too, is he uses the fireballs to go in. Oh, yeah. Like, the Mor They're most covered. Morgans that you play, see, they just like, oh, let me zone you, Whee! you know, if I'm zoning you successfully... Chris G is still one of the only guys that I see throw the air fireball and then air dash after it for yeah, like yeah. the entire screen and then throws another one and then unflies and uses that to get in even yeah. more, you know. I mean, obviously some other people do do that, but sure. he does it faster and... and oh, he and, does, definitely does it faster. And he also does it with more accuracy on what the opponent is doing or where he knows they're going to end up. Right, know? yeah. Just yeah, more accurately, so... You know, you have to plan half a second ahead with that character and he's... Really good at reading what you're gonna do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So. You know. Yeah, he looks really, really good <laughs> in that game. He's only getting better too, which I, is crazy. I think so. so yeah. I think so. So let's talk about injustice. That was a really good top eight. If 
you think that Injustice is a boring game, I definitely recommend checking out the Omicron Top 8, the replay. Lots of really good stuff. So Forever King won it with Batman, Wonder Woman, and Shazam. Playing to win, got second place with mm-hmm. Sinestro. Which was really sick, actually, watching him. Watching the way he played Sinestro. Absolutely. So Forever right. King Jr., who was actually Forever King's brother, got third place, mostly with Ares. He did play a little bit of Bane and Doomsday mm-hmm. in, in the winner's finals. Um, or, I guess, the loser's finals, actually. Chris uh, G. Got Chris fourth. G got fourth with Green Arrow. Juicy Jr. got fifth with Batman. He is the brother of JDM. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. And by the way, he eliminated his brother in ninth place. Ninth place. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. So, dude, I would. Well, I can't say anything because I was the younger brother. Yeah. So you know, but man, <laughs> I gotta imagine losing to your younger brother is kind of frustrating. Probably. But, yeah. Probably. I mean, it's probably cool to see your brother do well, but yeah, annoying yeah. at the same time. Black Mamba got fifth with Killer Frost and Aquaman. Shadow Glare got seventh with Hawk Girl, which is really cool. And Perfect Legend with Doomsday, and a little bit of Batman. Yeah. Now, I mean, keep in mind, like I've always kind of enjoyed this game i don't know much about it technically like i don't know all the details and stuff like that like i still don't even know what some traits do or Mm -hmm. whatever like that but every time i watch it i have a great time because like the game is just the character designs are really interesting oh that is that is the best part i love the fact that there are very distinct zoners versus offensive characters yeah i just i like the meter burn the meter is best yeah i just i love the way the entire meter system works right exactly I don't know. I, I just think the game is super fascinating, and I just uh, honestly, Superman killed the game. He kind of nearly man. killed the game. Superman, so. Black Adam, Aquaman—they're all slow characters, and they were probably the best. Yeah. Maybe you know, Green Lantern. That, that was maybe the best of the mm-hmm. previous patch. So when people saw the game, it was like Superman. I'm gonna do some breath. I'm gonna do some zoning. <laughs> I'm gonna jump up in the air and do some zoning. Black Adam. I'm gonna call lightning on you from far away yeah like, exactly it looked uh-huh. it looked slow but it's really not like that now yeah so the, the character variety was great you had batman wonder woman shazam sinestro Ares, bane doomsday I mean, Arrow, technically the killer main, frost aquaman the, hot girl the main character for all top eight was a different character it yeah, yeah the main yeah. and it was just crazy because i mean you saw like playing to win play the super zoning sinestro which was super cool and then all of a sudden you get to perfect legend who just had this total rush down uh doomsday like he literally was dashing at you and charging venom charging at you like 80 percent of his fight yeah you know and it, it, i don't know i just think it's just really cool it was awesome yeah yeah but i i do i do fear look i mean i know i know what people think about the game it's <laughs> it's too bad because it's kind of getting cross tekken syndrome yeah, and, and Edmundo, I mean, he says, I, I love Injustice now. I used to hate it. I hated it before it came out because I hated the animation. Yeah. And to be honest with you, the animation's not any better. The animation is still ass, okay? Every character still looks the same, and I still hate the stupid bouncing animation, whatever or not. But I'll look past it. I'll enjoy yeah. the game mechanic, you yeah. Know? So. yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I am worried about Cross Tekken Syndrome. In Cross Tekken, 2012 is a good game. The original one was was much slower paced and, and had some major balance problems. This one not so much, but it just got it got killed by the previous version of the game. By Superman, yeah. No, I mean I mean Cross Tekken. Oh, Cross Tekken. Got killed. Oh, it was already oh, dead yeah, by the time yeah, yeah. 2012 okay, came okay, out. Okay, okay. And now there's this new patch of Injustice and I worry that it's the same way. But, you know, at least at least there's a there are some solid scenes. So, you know, we have one in SoCal. In the north, you know, upper Midwest, they have a pretty good one. Right. East Coast in the Northeast, they have a pretty good one. So, I mean, there are there are some, but I know what a lot of people think about the game on streams. People who watch, and I know that they feel <laughs> yeah, it's boring. There it is right there. Yeah, it sucks. It just has this <laughs> reputation. Yeah, and unfortunately, that reputation, like I said, was built largely by one character. Yeah. Right. Because when we normally watch it. It, there's a lot of different things going on too and also i mean you know to be honest with you um i saw a few people tweet at us afterwards that they said that they really enjoyed our commentary on the game and okay. you know it helped them understand the game a little bit better i mean maybe that's, nice. that's one of the things that it needs is, is just you know more helping because you know i also asked a bunch of questions like what does sinestro's trait do that's what true, does this yeah. trait do what does this move do how does this work and I don't think a lot of people explain those things. I remember when Marvel first came out, Vanilla Marvel. Yeah. 
I must have repeated the same stupid basic info. Like I said, you know, in the middle of your dash, hold up back to block during right. super freeze. Like for yeah. at least four months. Right. For four to six months. But, you know, that's the thing. Like you do this on purpose because... When people watch the game, they don't know what's going on. Right. Half the people who are watching Injustice don't know what's going on. Right. And if you explain it, like, dude, I'm telling you right now, Sinestro's trait, if you didn't tell me what it is, I would have never seen that little yellow bullet firing out of it. Really? Because you can't see it. It's so small. It's just this tiny, like, I never knew what it did. I just saw something floating over oh, his head. Oh, for real? Okay. Yeah, I was okay. just like, okay. what does this trait do? Yeah. But as soon as you told me what it was, I was able to notice it, and I was I was able to process it. Really interesting trait. Yeah, and I, I feel like, I, even with, like, Persona, like, a couple of times when they threw me on Persona at the run back, you know, I would describe everything in its most basic form. Yeah. I described how Igus' meter worked. In, like, right, grand right, detail right. every time, you know, because I just feel like that's what these games need. Okay. I mean, I did it with Marvel. I did. Yeah, yeah. I don't do it as much anymore because right. it's so advanced. Right. I just feel like we st- ah, I don't know. Sorry. Soapbox I, I, No, so. no. I, I think that's accurate. <laughs> um, I, I do think that Injustice has a couple of good commentators, actually, but they are good for people who know the game. Right. Exactly. So I, 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 think, I think you're right. Like... Mm-hmm. There is, even though there is good commentary, it's not like the explanatory new kind of comment, like n- commentary for newer people, and and that's fine if you, it's just like a GGA stream, like most people aren't watching that unless you mm-hmm. know the game, like right, that's right, a different right, story. Right. But when it comes to something that's that's, you know, like Yomicon or wherever, then you know it deserves um, like a chance for the viewer base. Yeah, you know what I mean, like. Mm-hmm. If people are gonna keep thinking it's boring if they're just if they don't know what's going on. Right. So, I think you're right to try to do that. I, I just I, I think that's I think that's good. Yeah, I just think it's like we're not at that point yet where we don't have to explain pick and roll or what a right you know what a what a crazy you yeah know, like any of these football plays yeah or whatever like, like pistol that. formation yeah, exactly. like wildcat See, like like because enough pe- defense uh, like. enough people know it that even if say, like, I'm like, I don't know what that is. Like, 80% of the people watching will be like, well, James, let right, me yeah. tell you what a, you know, that's the whole thing, right? And so, but fighting games, we're not at that point. No. Especially the newer games. Right. Especially the newer games, so. Right, right. Well, I think I think you're right. And I thought that that was, I thought that was good. Mm-hmm. Um, once I, I guess once I realized what you were doing, because at first I was like, why is, I thought, I thought you knew, I guess. Uh-huh, like, uh-huh. But no, you're, you're totally right to, yeah, to have yeah, asked. Yeah, yeah, because... So. I feel I, I, I want people to learn injustice. I want yeah, people to learn this game because you start seeing all the little small things and the, and the strategy and stuff like that. I mean, let's face it. Everyone calls it, I mean, they're going to see it. Everyone calls it Resident Sleeper. Mm. The game is not slower paced than Street Fighter 4 is. No. But everybody knows what's happening in Street Fighter 4 now because this game is five years old, right? right. And so we've talked about footsies enough you know that people appreciate that and yeah. you know granted injustice has that walking speed problem that kind of kills the everybody footsies. would like it to have faster speed no yeah. doubt no doubt but there's still so much happening in that game yeah. and i i don't know i think it's exciting so me too yeah. i thought it was a good top eight again i hope people check it out yep uh in persona let's see hypermarth one with mitsuru yeah, I mean, we didn't get a chance to watch most no, of the No, I didn't. I just... Yeah. Mitsuru won, okay. Yeah. Um, 2B Miller with Yosuke, Grant with Ken, Kanji, Chosen Ninja with Yukiko. Oh, I guess got fifth. Nobody nobody EXE. Omex mm-hmm. with Kanji, Shinsen with Yu Narukami, and Rock Dan with Teddy. <laughs> that's actually impressive because the only repeat character is Kanji. That's pretty cool, actually. That, yeah. That's not what I would have expected. So. Right, right. Um, but yeah, we didn't actually really see much of that to be yeah, honest yeah so. uh we also didn't see much of the smash i wish that i had seen some of it but we were just commentating i didn't at even the time. know mewtwo king was there oh yeah no this dude ran it he mewtwo king won brawl uh doubles let's see he also won smash singles for right, both right. so he, yeah. he won first in doubles in in melee um yeah, there was also a KOF tournament that took place there that didn't get streamed at all. I actually didn't know that there was yeah. a KOF tournament. Um, it was all run on Saturday. It finished on Saturday. Oh. And um, Chris G won that. So oh. that's all I know. Because okay. Chris G was like, I won KOF. I was like, okay. <laughs> but I don't think that there was that many people entering it. Like, yeah. honestly, I'd be surprised if there was more than like 15 people okay. in there. Because uh, apparently KOF is even 
I don't know what's going on with that game. See, there's a super exciting game. There's mm. a super fun game. It's fast paced. That mm. dev game is definitely not Resident Sleeper, but like, I heard like at Runback, no one is showing up for it. Yeah, like, that's it's like saying. literally there's like six people every week showing up for this game. I don't know what happened. I mean, it, game is fun. I want to learn it. Like, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on there. <sighs> so that was in that was the Yomacon tournament. Um, you want to take a break and we'll like talk about other stuff? Yeah, sure, no problem. Okay, All let's right. do that. We'll be right back.